Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Awesome. So I want to just take a couple seconds before I start to really marvel at Santa Cruz, right? This is a great community that we live in. I'm proud to live here and really happy to be a part of this event, so thanks for having me. So I'm going to tell you guys a story. And my story is about gamification, and I can't really see, but I'm going to try. So how many of you out there know a little bit about gamification? Right on. I love that. It's taken off. So my story is about gamification and specifically about how I became involved with gamification and how through that involvement I learned what I know today, which is how gamification is changing the way that we interact with online content. And I believe that it has the power to change that interaction in a very positive way. And so this is me, if you didn't already see me up here before. This is me a couple of years ago. And I was living here in Santa Cruz. I had my own little graphic design and photography business. I was doing great. I was surfing every day. For all intents and purposes, my life was awesome. And I was happy, but I wasn't satisfied. And I didn't know why, so I was looking for something new. And then a friend and colleague called me and said, hey, I want for you to help me with this 007 sales pitch that I'm doing. And I nearly fell out of my chair because 007 is really close to one of my favorite things in the world. It's right up there with surfing, my wife, and my dog, Speck. <laughs> so back to the 007 thing. So my friend says, I'm working for this company called Bunchball. And I was like, what? He's like, Bunchball. Like the way that little kids bunch around a soccer ball when they're playing the game. And I was like, OK, cool. What is that? He's like, well, it's a gamification company. And I was like, mm-hmm. And he said, <laughs> He goes, yeah, you know, gamification. It's the application of game dynamics to non-gaming environments, which was still not meaning much to me, until he showed me the site and told me what he wanted for me to do with it. And he said, I want for you to take this site, and I want for you to create a really engaging, special user experience for everybody that comes here. So I want for you to take all of this content and create an experience where a user can feel a part of the story and they can earn points and rewards, and they can be a part of a community, right? I want for you to create some connective tissue for this site. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. So I took that away, and I spent a week locked in my office, having the most fun that I'd had in years working on this project. And that's when I knew that I wanted to work for Bunchball, and I wanted to gamify pretty much everything on Earth. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so back to this little example here. Let's look at the site before for a quick sec, right? So this is a very awesomely designed site, but it's a really flat experience, right? You come to this site, you consume some information, you read some news, um, right? You get a download, download a wallpaper, watch a trailer, whatever. But once you've done those things, there's no reason to come back to the site. You've consumed the information, there's no reason to interact with it anymore. So what I did was I said, well, let's make this situation where you can come to the site and you can become a secret agent. You can become a 007 agent, right? And the way that you do that is by earning points and other rewards on the site by maybe taking a trivia quiz or mixing a drink or playing a game or taking a test drive in a virtual Aston Martin, right? And so let's look at the game dynamics that we use to create this experience. Points get users invested in site activities. Leaderboards encourage competition and repeat visits. Tasks get users engaged by creating content, and they spend more time on site as a result. And we can also dynamically notify users that their actions result in rewards. So we can say, hey, congratulations for playing with the mixology thing, right? You just earned five points. Now try the trivia quiz. And so in this way, we can create this pathway for the user so that they come into the site, and they're doing different things, and they're seeing the content that we want for them to see in that experience. And I realize as I say that that it sounds a little big brother, right? It's a little bit freakish. But the truth is that you can use that however you want. And this is a very commercialized example. I'll get into another example in a sec, but I want to talk first about game dynamics and also these basic sort of human needs that we have, right? So we all need and want in our lives reward, status, achievement, self-expression, competition, and altruism. 
And game designers have known for years how to incent and motivate player behavior through the use of game dynamics, which are what you see here, points, levels, challenges, et cetera, right? So green is the sweet spot where the dynamic inter intersects with the need, right? So if we look at levels and we think about frequent flyer programs, right? That's all about status, right? I have premier executive status, and I don't know about you, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It's a broken system. We're going to fix it. But <laughs> it has to do with status, but it also has to do with achievement, right? Because when I move up to million miler, that's awesome, and it also has to do with competition, because when I'm in million miler, and you're in premier executive, and I get on the plane before you, I just won. <laughs> so it's about all of those things, right? So, <laughs> so the question is, how do we take these things and create experiences that are a little bit different? So we know that everyone here knows about frequent flyer programs. Starbucks is awarding points and badges for repeat store visits. 200 million plus people play social games with only virtual rewards. These are all facts within our lives, right? And so the question is, how do we take these facts and turn them into positive results? And so I want to talk about Hope Lab for a second. So Hope Lab is an organization that is taking technology and using it to help kids um, live healthier lifestyles. And Zamzi is one of Hope Lab's innovative solutions. And so there's this little piece here that you can see that kids strap onto their belt. And this little digital device records their vigorous activity or exercise in little bursts. And so here's how it works. These kids come home from school. They strap this little thing onto their belt. They play some games. It's recording their activity. And then they can take that device and plug it into a computer to see the points that they've earned for their activities. And then they can use those points to buy things online, like for their avatar, right? So they can dress their little avatar with cool shades and shirts and whatever. And you might say, avatars, that's really stupid. Why would anybody ever want to do that? And the answer is that it addresses a human need. Everybody needs to self-express, right? So an avatar is a great way to self-express online. Remember I talked about those flat experiences? This creates an experience where now I have a personalized piece of myself on the internet. And that's cool, especially for kids. And um, they can also see the activity of other users. This is also important. So they can see what other kids are doing on the site. Um, and that creates an environment where now they're not just an individual in a vast land of nothing. They're now a part of a community where they can see what other people are doing. And they want to be a part of that action. And that's important, too. It addresses a human need. So if we look at this again, what we see with these two examples, and what's really, really exciting to me, is that we can see that they're the same, right? The commercial example uses the same game dynamics and addresses the same human needs that the Hope Lab example addresses, right? So what that tells me is that it's all up to you. You can do whatever you want with this information. And you could say, well, Farmville is a total waste of time. I have a friend tell me that. And it's absolutely true. It is. <laughs> There's no doubt about that at all. You could be out gardening if you want, right? But the truth is that if we didn't have the example of Farmville, and we didn't have the example of uh, Bunchball's, you know, 60-plus implementations over the years, we wouldn't have the Hope Lab example either, and we wouldn't have the change that we see. It's all an evolution. So I want to tell you one more quick little story. So last night, I was at home, and I was researching some of the other speakers here, and I was watching uh, Kyle, who's going to talk here in a little bit, he has a five-minute video posted about plastics, right? And how can you um, help to save the world by reducing your use of plastics? And I thought, God, you know, how cool would it be if Santa Cruz created a program where we said, we're going to reduce collectively our use of plastics by what? Pick a number. 90%. 90% over two years, OK? You could make it less, 50% over a year, whatever you want. But that as a community, we created a place where you could go and you could register, right? So now, what are you? You're not an individual. You're part of a group. You're accountable to what? Not just the earth. You're accountable to your community, right? So every time you go to a store and they say, would you like a plastic bag for that? You could say, no, thanks. 
and then you go home and you record that you said no, you get a point. You use those points, right, to purchase maybe renewable energy for yourself somehow, right? So you start to see how all of these things start to tie together and fit together. So by addressing the human needs that I talked about with the game dynamics that I talked about, we can make great change in the world. So when I think about gamification, what I think about is that it has the power to change the way that we interact with online content in a very positive way, right? We can change the way we educate ourselves. We can change the way we take our medication. We can change the way that we have fun, right? And that's all up to you. So with a clear set of best practices, a clear goal, a clear understanding of how you can influence human behavior with these dynamics, you can do pretty much anything. So it's entirely up to you. And I look forward to seeing what happens in the future, right? I look forward to seeing where gamification takes us. I know, I know it's early, but things are going to happen, and they're all going to be good. So thank you very much for your time, and uh, I look forward to the rest of the day. <laughs>